fraction in this trinomial and um, notice that this is a six, so it's not a one. So this is gonna be often looked at differently than um, if it was a one. Okay, so our first step in this is to factor by grouping. In order to do that, I will bring down the first term. In this case, is six x squared. Then I'm going to add two blanks, and I will bring down the last term, which is plus five. Our next step is to figure out what is going in these two blanks. So we want to multiply a, which in this case is six, times c, in this case is five. So a times c is five, uh, six times five, excuse me, and that's gonna be 30. So a times c is 30. So now I need to think, what are the factors of 30 that would multiply to give me 30 and add to give me B. In this case, B is 17. So if I list the factors of 30, I can start with one, one times 30, two times 15, three times 10, four doesn't work, but five would give me five times six, and if I kept going, I would have six times five, and I would be basically starting back over. So these are the list of all the factors of 30. Now I need to figure out which of these add to give me 17. So one and 30 is gonna give me 31, and two and 15 will give me, if I add those two together, will give me 17. So now that I know that two and 15 give me 17, what I want to do is take each of these and put it in the blank, and again, I'm trying to get 17x, so this is gonna be 2x, and this will be 15x. So again, if I was to add these two together, I would get back the 17x. Now, I don't want to add them, that's not where we're going with this, but um, I do wanna double check that that's gonna give me back my original trinomial. Okay, now I will say that students often ask me, does it matter what order these are in? And the answer to that is no as long as if the signs are an issue, for example, if this was a problem with negative signs, you would want to make sure that the appropriate sign went with the appropriate term. In this case, everything is positive and we don't have to worry about signs and numbers, the order doesn't matter because it will just work out the same way either way. So we have grouped. Our next step is to factor out the GCF in each group. So if I'm grouping these together, I'm grouping the first two terms and the last two terms. And now I want to factor out the GCF in each of these. So what is in common? Here, six and two is gonna have a two in common, and x squared and x is going to have an x in common. Now what do I mean by factoring it out? That means if I put a two x here, I'm effectively dividing a 2x out by each of these terms or from each of these terms. So when I do that, what do I have left? What would my remaining factor be? So let's look at each term individually. Six divided by two would give me three. X squared divided by X is X. Plus two divided by two is one. X divided by X cancels. Okay, so there's my GCF and my remaining factor. Let's do the same thing with the last two terms. So what is in common? I have a 15 and 5. 5 would be my GCF. I would not have an X in this GCF because there's not an X in each of these. And I need to figure out what is the remaining term. In order to make this mathematically correct, I will put a 5 in the front but then divide that 5 out in each term. So let's see what this simplifies to. 15 over five is three, and we bring down the x, plus five over five is one. We're almost there. Now at this point, you want to stop and make sure that you're on the right track. How do you know that you're on the right track? Well, that's what we do here. We want to look and see inside these parentheses, the remaining factor for both of these 
um, factoring out the GCF, we want to make sure these are the same. If you do this step and you do not get the same factor here, then you've done something wrong. So you need to go back and check and see what's going on, okay? In our problem, we do see that this is the same. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. I do it this way because I'm thinking about if I'm factoring out another GCF, what would be then in common with this set and then this set? So with this set of numbers, 2x times 3x plus 1, 3x is the same as the 3x, I'm sorry, 3x plus 1 is the same as the 3x plus 1 here. So I have 3x plus 1s in common. I want to pull those out as a new GCF. Okay. Now I can think of this the same as the what I did up here. If I pull out a 3x plus 1, that's also going to divide out this 3x plus 1. So all I'll have left is the number in the front here, which would be 2x. And then if I pull out this 3x plus 1, I would have the 5 left. Okay. So this would be my final answer. We also need to know that you can write this as 2x plus 5 times 3x plus 1. So both of these are the same because it's multiplication. It, the order doesn't matter as long as each factor is remaining the same with the signs. Um, and again, this is all positive, but if there were some negatives in there, you would want to um, make sure that that stayed with each factor. Okay, so that was factoring trinomials with a not equal to one, and we used factor by grouping in order to do that.